hi, this is <laughs> this is the Kintsune Gamer. I have mispronounced my name. I that's not an accident. That's how you, <laughs> this is a great start. I'm doing tutorials for th right now. This is something that I decided to share. This isn't necessarily how to do things, except that it is. It's not how to animate. It's how to do certain things. Th there's lots of things I can do. I can show you all these flashing before your eyes. Oh, <laughs> ignore that. Um, so, what should we start with? We'll start with the first one. Of course, um, more so why not. But, here, what is this even? Um, we get rid of that. We don't need that. All we need, uh, that should not be, you know what, we just need to focus on this, and this, this mostly. So this is a body. <laughs> this is, in fact, a body. Arms and uh, legs. All of which are necessary for a stick figure. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. You don't have to have arms and legs. But, for the example, you know. Now, what you're going to do... Ugh, those jolly arches do not agree with me. Um, we're going to take a thing. What are these things? These are guides. Guides to what? Well, okay, when people animate, they do this. Like, oh, yay, I can do things. I'm animating. I'm doing good. Um, uh, but... Whoa, this is not correct lines at all. I mean, this is, don't even look at that. It's, no, you don't do that. Um, an easy way to stop from resizing constantly is one, checking previous frames, <laughs> on these again. Um, but also guidelines. These kind of guidelines in particular. Um, let's say you create a character. Like this. And I decide these is my character. Mare, I have two of the same character. Hi. <laughs> this is a different proportion from the other one. Well, that's... If I was, if this is a different frame, I'm obviously doing it wrong. The, the legs are much shorter. This doesn't even have feet. You can't walk without feet. So, this is wrong. If uh, this is a different frame in the animation, this is all wrong. <laughs> okay, so how do you make these? Well, they're really simple. You create a layer. We'll, we'll start everything on new thing. Well, what do you do? Well, first thing, uh, you gotta create a character. So I'm creating a character. And this is a happy character. I. It has a T for a face. Yeah, th that. <laughs> That's this face. So how do we constantly draw this character without having to constantly look and compare it to this one? Well, an easy thing to do is make guidelines. So what we'll do, uh, if you hold shift and go left or right, or up and down, we're going to be using left and right for this example. Uh, then you'll draw a straight line. Uh, you can use regular lines for this if you want. For example, I'm not. Uh, so now we have lines for right here at the crotch area, where this will be telling you how long his legs can be. His legs can get no higher than that, maybe a little bit higher, because it's sort of bent at angle. We'll go up a little bit higher, but not by much. Don't worry about that. And then we go here at the neck. Like this is how long the torso can be. The torso can be no taller than this. This is how long the torso can be standing up. This is how long the legs can be standing up. So as I'm animating, I know that my leg can be like this. I can do this. <laughs> Let's get my feet just for the time being. And it can be like this. The arms, they matter some. Not all the time. You can generally get a good, accurate. <laughs> you can generally just look and guess it correctly, but but you can also use this in different ways. 
I'm gonna hurry up. I've spent five minutes talking about this. Um, if I do this, and I feel as this makes sense, as in this bent will equal this. If that makes sense to me, then so be it. It is as it is. That is guidelines. I hope you understand. <laughs> because I explained it with this and that. And oh, and you want to put this stuff on a guide layer. So when you play the video, these guidelines will not show up. Yeah. Good. I will I will, I will name you. Um Sassy. Uh McGee. No. Sassy Mc McT. <laughs> Sassy McT. Um yeah. There you go. That is guide proportions. I've been through this five minutes of this video talking about guidelines, something that you probably already know. Um alright. What is this? You may say. Um Oh look at this oh, is it a trails tutorial? No, well I'll have no trails. Um so we're not gonna be going over that. Uh Pepper does a really good video on trails, but here's just a quick a quick tip on things I can if I go here, I select all the frames. What are we gonna be doing? I probably should explain that first. Um we're gonna be adding an outline to this without going individually and making an outline for each one of these. Like I wanna make an outline. Let's say three outline. Yeah, black for each one of these, then that's just it can be too much. And then like you have to do it for not just these, you have to do it for every single one of these on these different frames. And that's just unkosher. That's just a lot of work. Um so we can speed this up by taking all of our frames. All of them. Except maybe these. But we'll keep them for the time being. We'll copy these, okay? We're gonna go down here, create a new layer. Then, paste all this. We're pasting all the frames uh, into the symbol. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna create a new layer. Then we're going to take our... <laughs> I have to slide the arrow up. We can take that away. Um, so we're going to take our new frame. This is our new frame. It's not our new frame. It's our, it's our new symbol. It's this entire animation is being played in here, and it will be shown once we play the video. So we're going to take this. We're going to line up to there. We usually snap on. Um, we can get rid of that. You can play the video just to make sure it's exactly where you want it to be. Um, now <laughs> we we don't have to hide all this, we can just do this. So now we have this as... <laughs> make sure not to move it. We can add filters to it. How do we add outlines to that? How? Uh, is it with a glow? <laughs> yeah, that's with a glow. Because you can just add an outline with the glow. You can do that. But look at that. You can tell. That's this isn't. That's a glow. That's not an outline. We need a hard line. <laughs> well, there is a way. Oh, trust me, there is. Um, <laughs> not bevel. Uh, what do we need to do? Oh, we need to make a drop shadow. You can have high, low, doesn't matter. Um, low if you want a bit thicker of a line. So I'll have it alone for the time. Distance zero. Yeah, and then we can make this higher. But it's still glowing. But, but the strength. Oh. Oh. Take a little combination of, of trial and error. We have an outline. What if we play the video? Oh, it's nice. Look at that. We have a glow. It's not a glow. <laughs> it's just, um, if you want to make it less obvious, you can make it more obvious. That's it's a bevel, but it's a nicer looking bevel than than a glow. If we can have a glow, at, what was I think it was nine, this high stuff. So we can have this, or we can have this. 
You okay? <laughs> You're back. We just ran out of time. Um, so yes, we can have either glow beam. We can have a glow, and that's just this isn't look nice. It's about as nice as you can make it look. <laughs> so you can have a drop shadow, uh, make it look nicer, uh, and just have the distance zero, and that's all that it is. And you have. You can apply other effects to this if you want. You can <laughs> even make a bevel. Um, you can just do that if you want. Quick tip on bevels. Uh, make one of the things, make, make <laughs> like this, the um, white to zero, and now you just have this. You just have this. You just have that. And you can create another bevel. Get rid of the black. And just have the white. Uh, so the opposite what we do with that. Very small. Uh, bevel. Uh, that's that's very short, but very strong. It's at 215. Uh, let's do it in background that we can see <laughs> what we've done. And oh, look at that. It looks nice. That just looks. If you want to, you can add a. Uh, you can add. And get this a blend. And have it lighten. Or <laughs> ooh, hard light. I like the way that looks. Overlay's good too. You can have it on a hard light. Um, these blends make it depending on the background. This fully depends on the background here. This part background and oriented. So if you have something, and you pick a blend, like let's say hard light. This will do a thing depending on the background. Uh, don't believe me? Uh, you should, and I'm sure you do. But example of this would be like taking this, and it's the same thing. But if we change it to something that isn't, oh, it looks different. Oh, you can't really, you can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to let's add a gradient to that. No, let's let's make half of that a different color, and you can see it does change. Look at that; it changes depending on the background. So we can have it all like we get rid of that. Oh my! <laughs> what have we done? Oh, I can't. It's because we. Ooh, edit that part out, Barry. <laughs> That's. Okay, so if we take half of this and we change this to black, there is a change. But hard light is kind of funky. Uh, it doesn't like change that often. Oh, oh it's because we had. It's because we had this under it. You see. So, yeah, taking that away. Yeah. So, the blend depends on the background. And it can look weird. Yeah. That's a thing. I explain things well, I feel. Uh, fire. This is going to be a bit more complicated. It's so, f f might as well stop watching now. Oh, not how, not how to animate fire. That's fine. Uh, Bepler did a really good video on that. Uh, Turquoise also did a video on that a long time ago. He used to do tutorials. Um, so, what I want to tell you how to do here is that we're going to do something similar. We're going to copy all of those frames. In fact, you can cut them if you want. Make it simple. Put it inside of that and create two more frame layers. Alright. What we're going to do here. Well, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. Duplicate it twice. Yeah. We're going to put the first one here. We're going to put the first one right above that one. So now we have two. But one of us isn't moving because we're in preview. And preview doesn't allow you to see the symbols yet. So we're going to take another one. Or it could be the same one. I don't think it matters. And now we have two of them in the exact same position. What are we going to do with these? You may wonder to yourself. 
and to that I will answer you in some way. So we're going to take this, because it's simple, we can add filters to it. So we're going to do this. We're going to add a glow, an inner glow. Uh, ooh, look at that. Already. Just already. Um, so already we can see fire looks much nicer now because it has like a see fire has is like orange in the middle and it has red on the outside because that's what it looks like when it's dying and doling down uh because the fire is hotter when it's orange and less hot when it's red for the most part so we're going to stop looking at that now we're going to look at this and we go oh what is this well, we're going to blur this one. Oh, yes. We're going to blur it. Why? I don't know. Fire just looks kind of blurry sometimes. So, now looking at that, we can tell we've done a whole lot of something. Um. So, what we can do here is that we can continue doing anything we want. If we want to add a glow to this blur, uh, you can do that. I, I, I want to make it. I want to make it. Uh, oof, we should make it red. <laughs> Why? Because fire, like I said, gets duller as it goes out, and red is the dullest of the hot colors, <laughs> which is actually true. Is to believe it or not. So now that we have this part in the middle, it's. Complete. Oh, and <laughs> of course we have to put a fire inside of um, the canvas. If we look at it, we place the wrong symbol. Place the right one now. Oh my. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> it's <laughs> nice looking fire from an effects perspective. We we can put um. Yeah, we can put stuff, uh, we can blend it with the background and make it like that and make it like really hot looking like a very many degrees this is temperature wise okay, now this one <laughs> okay, I believe this is going to be about a 20 minute video or 25 minute who knows as you saw there this is at 18 FPS because this video is for Blazor. Um, th this particular sort of t tricks and tips part. Um, here's the thing. Um, this is based off a video that he did. Um, that was like a punch and a kick. Uh, at 18 FPS. And it looked good. It looked really nice. But um, there's something you could have done to make it better. And I just want to explain that here. Um, what he could have done, and what you might want to do. You don't have to. It's not everyone does it. Um, some people do. Ewan does it, for example. That's <laughs> probably my leading example of why you should do this. Is that when you hit, uh, you should, like, this hit. Like, I hit something here. I just haven't had <laughs> any kind of reactions to it. But, theoretically, I hit something. So, I want to go here. I want to press F5. That is not F5, <laughs> it was F4. F5. Oh, I just made the same frame happen twice. Oh, but now, the force I'm bringing into here from this frame to this frame is being dispersed into my opponent. And I've come to a complete stop. My motion has ended. And I've sort of ragdoll. Until I put force into my body to do another thing. So, here, we've double framed here. Now the force is coming out here. We'll do the same thing over here. We're going to zoom hit something here. And now, oh now, it <laughs> looks better. It's it's like a tiny stop at when you hit something, and it looks good. But we can continue this even further through double framing, like here. Um. You can use a double frame, and get, you can get away with double framing when something's moving slowly. Uh, for 18 FPS, this is slow. Yeah, higher FPS, this would not be slow. 
Yes, <laughs> sorry. Um, we've hit 20 minutes. Um, so for this part, we've, uh, this is slow for 18 FPS. Higher FPS, this would not be as slow. But for this part, it's slow. <laughs> Even if it's being that slow. Yeah, um, it still goes by really fast. So we can double frame this and make it slower. <laughs> as you saw there, it took it a little bit longer to get all the way up. And if you want to, I'm sure you could maybe get away with that. But it's a bit more janky. Um, so it's a trade-off. But it's not a big one. So most of the time, whenever you have a slow motion, you want to double frame it to make it last longer. Um, we have another example coming up. I hit that. I kick that, and then I sort of ragdoll. Come back down here. And I sort of do that like a little bouncy motion. Um, so I've gone here and here. I stopped. And I sort of keep going now. Slow motion. Um, but I feel like that is faster. And I feel like this should be double framed. So, why? Well, <laughs> as you saw. Um, yeah. There's... Whenever something goes slow, you can double frame it, and it will go slower. Twice as slow, that particular frame, actually. A uh, true fact for you to learn that you just did. Uh, <laughs> good. I think that's everything. Um, I will have the files of, like, okay, like, this is okay. Like, the double framing is, for this example, not bad. Um, basic overview of everything you learned. If anything, um, these guys are <laughs> important when animating long 2D videos, because they let you keep reference of the original proportions without having to go back and reference the original all the time. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. And then, oh, <laughs> you still have that. That's nice. Yeah, so here we've learned you can add effects to a lot of things without d making each frame a, um, a thing. Um, we get rid of those, and we'll just keep this, and we've made an outline <laughs> without actually making an outline. That's good. You can use a glove if you want. I think it looks better with drop down. Maybe there's not a difference, but I think there is somehow. So use a drop shadow if you want. I do. Um, fire effect, we learned we can have multiple things in here. Like like okay, there's the fire. Like that's the actual fire. But we also have these effects. We have a glowy effect, which has you know, it's good. If you want to, you can make a knockout. Maybe, just maybe, it'll look a little bit better. So, under that circumstance, did we make it look better? I think so. I think it looked good. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks good. Um, so yeah, we have this, which you I, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to do earlier to make it a knockout. Um, but now you know that it's there. Um, this is blurred out, and it's got a glow. Uh, makes it glowy, and then blurry in the inside, which is good. And then we have the actual flame effect, which, if we want to, let's see what it looks like if we get rid of that. And just keep that out. Yeah, it looks good. Maybe? You, I guess it's preference. You can really decide which one you like better. I think they're very similar. Um, both look good, actually. Um, and double framing. It's... You should... <laughs> you, you always do it. Like... Oh, hold on. Like regardless of any kind of project you're doing, double framing is always going to be important. Um, animating everything on, like, on one frame? Like, you can do that if you want. It'll take a long time. And honestly, the results would not only be difficult, more difficult to get, sometimes it looks better like this. Like, it does look better like this. 
you can animate the frame between this frame and the next frame right here. Like, I could do that if I so uh, pleased, but my problem with that is that one, you still won't have as much impact as that. It just looks like it did more damage. Like, it looks like there's force was conveyed, and that's good. So, this is the Kitsune Gamer. Um, the Kitsune Gamer. And I am aware that there is, for Japanese speaking and English speaking, there is a little mark over this E, and it's pronounced Kitsune. Um, I'm an American, <laughs> mostly. Um, and this says Kitsune to me. And I like the way it sounds, Kitsune. Um, so I'm gonna keep calling it that. Uh, so yeah, um, signing off is the Kitsune Gamer. Yeah, we'll draw a tail because it feels as if that's appropriate. Oh my. <laughs> I have my legs like super weird right now. So it's like, okay, there we go. Oh, fun fact. Favorite color? Um, blue, actually. Not orange. <laughs> but orange looks good. It does. Um, if I was. You know what? Let's use the thing which I was set. I was going to put a, um. I was so going to put a, uh, outline on all this, but. No, let's let's use the um let's continue that. Uh tradition here of using what you learn to our advantage. And yeah, of why if we have a tail coming out of it? I we can, I guess. That's not a logo. That's not my logo. Get rid of that. Paper color is blue actually. Orange is good. It's a good compliment. Yeah. Compliment to colors. You should look that up. It's good. Alright. Um, see you next time. Or no time. Who knows? You do, maybe. I don't. Not right now. Uh, s bye. 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 Bye.